Okay, this is going to be a video, uh, my attempt to uh, use acid to clean off the rust on an old Ford Model A wheel. Um, this wheel is about 90 years old, so, and I'm going to try using something called citric acid. So I went online and I was looking at ways to clean up rust off metal and this guy had a video comparing different methods it's actually a good video I'll put a link to it uh, down below later and um, he tested like muriatic acid uh, vinegar uh, lots of different things right and he tested soda and uh, well I didn't want to use muriatic acid because that uh, I'm pretty all pool owners are familiar with that. It's a pretty caustic acid. It's, um, I think it's overkill for a job like this. It's, it's uh, hard to dispose of. It, it could do damage to you. <laughs> so this citric acid looked like an alternative. So I'm going to try it out. I ordered a, a bag of this. Again, if you go to that video, I'll put a link. Um, I ordered this online. It's the biggest bag. It's like two and a half pounds. There's no directions on how to mix this, so the container I'm going to use, I'm just going to just, uh, maybe I'll use all of it, I don't know, but I'll keep, I'll kind of go by feel, I guess, on that, but I'll probably use most of the bag because this wheel is pretty big. Something to uh, help you out on the Model A wheels here, I'm not a wheel expert, but just some tips and tricks. So I have a... A 30 31 Model A, so the wheels are different than a 29. Uh, although these are known as 19 inch wheels, if you if you stand them up and measure them, uh, they're pretty. The total diameter here is like 20 and a half inches, uh, 20 and a half. So I'm not sure where the measurement is to 19 for that on these, uh, but. Just be aware if you're looking for a container to put this in. It's actually difficult. I'll get to that in a second. It's <laughs> unless you have like a kiddie pool or something. You don't want to. I was trying to find a container that uh, would enclose or submerge the wheel of the Model A without using a whole lot of extra liquid. I don't need, and that was pretty difficult. Um, when you're looking at wheels, I bought these from a local guy use. I got two. This is one. I got another one. Um, you're never guaranteed. You try. You want to try to pick them out so they're not warped and that they'll be balanced. Now, the, if you're in a yard or just picking these out, you're, you're kind of taking a guess. It's a crapshoot if this will be a good wheel or not. So you want to try to inspect as much as possible. So some things you can do is check and see if all the spokes are straight. This is mostly straight down here. I don't know if you can see there's a slight bend down here, but for the most part these spokes are pretty straight and they are on the other wheel. Uh, the other thing you want to look at is if you have a flat surface nearby, like a driveway or even a garage, like a, you know, don't use your dining room table or something if uh, <laughs> you don't want to get in trouble. But uh, a piece of good uh, plywood that you can lay it flat like this and then just see you know look you can put your head down you know peek down along the sides see if there's any like look for any unevenness or just go around the wheel just try to spot check it the best you can on a flat surface uh, the other thing you want to look at it'll be helpful is this edge around here, this uh, this bead or whatever on the rim, you want to try to make sure that's flat and pronounced as possible. And remember, of the two sides, this will be on the inside, this will be on the outside facing. So you want to make sure there's not pitting or anything in here that's bad. I know this looks bad on video, but I think this will clean up pretty well. You also want to check this will be hard to see in the video, but um, any bends, because over the years, as people, don't forget it's a 90 year old wheel, right? So over the years, it's had flats probably, or people take the tire off and change the tire. And over the years, just 
any kind of metal piece to pry the tire off. You may see some slight dents in here. Uh, this has a slight one over uh, over here, I think. But again, this is pretty. Overall, it's a pretty good wheel for a fair price that I got it. So those are some things you want to look at. Um, ideally, what you would do, and I don't have the facility to do this, is you would get some kind of like uh, spare mounting, some kind of mounting system where you could mount this on something and you'd spin it. And as you're spinning the wheel, uh, one way to do that is you could, <laughs> if you're shopping with your Model A, you could drive your Model A up to the guy that's selling the used wheel and you could jack up your Model A, take one of the front tires off put a spare on just spin it and you can actually try it directly on your model a but not everybody can drive around their model a as they're shopping for parts um, both mine are actually not running at the moment so <laughs> so those are just some ways and again you can do all this research and this could still be a bad wheel so uh it could wobble it could not be even so i gotta you know but i'm gonna try to clean it up first so i can see what i got and uh, just get this rust off right and I don't have a sandblaster but I want to try a different method that's uh, it will be a little more time but less uh, abrasive on here so the other trick I mentioned earlier is um, how do you find a container right well I first thought I would use my wheelbarrow. I was like, all right, I got a pretty good size wheelbarrow, but um, what I soon found out, again, this is a hard object to submerge. Uh, it doesn't, maybe if you have a big wheelbarrow, but like this doesn't, I can't get this in all the way and I could do, I could do one side like that and that's not kind of, so this wasn't ideal. What I ended up doing was, um, I found this container, it's used to mix mortar uh, I'll send a shout out to uh, Lowe's. So this is uh, called a, if I look at the stick here in here, it's called a large mixing tub. And it's the largest one they had. Even though it's the largest one, if I measure on the inside, it says 21 inches on the inside. But it, um, what you can't quite see is <laughs> it concaves, it, it curves in, it tapers in a bit on the side. So it's not like uh, perfectly straight on the edges. It's on the sides, there's an angle. So what you'll see is when I put the wheel in, let me see if I got this okay. Now, this is better than the wheelbarrow, uh, but as you can see, it doesn't sit all the way flat, but that's the best I can do. Um, I did see uh, a round metal bucket for sale at Home Depot that looked like it might be the right diameter, but it looked kind of a, and this is only 15 bucks, the, the, the metal corrugated steel bucket was like 27 or 30, and I would have got it, but um, it just looked poor quality made. Like when I was looking at the seams on it, it had uh, silica. <laughs> it didn't look like it would hold water very well, whereas this at least... Um, and I could maybe, I don't know if I'll be able to use this in the future, but this I'm pretty sure will hold liquid. There's no, uh, you can look inside this, this mold, this is a pretty, you know, pretty thick plastic. This is going to hold liquid and I might be able to use this in the future. We'll see. Um, but what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to mix the acid with some warm water and put this in the container and We'll come back and look at it and see how it does removing rust. Okay, we're about to mix the ratio here. Um, before I get in the details of that, I don't know if I pointed out at the beginning of the last video clip why I'm using citric acid. So I mentioned a YouTube video I saw earlier comparing a bunch of different acids. Um, one is for cost. Um, I wanted to not go with like a commercial, like um, I know there's lots of commercial uh, rust removal products on the market, but I wanted something that was good cost effective, but um, I also didn't want to go with acid. I know there's concentrate, I'm sorry, I didn't want to go with vinegar. 
I've used vinegar in the past. Vinegar's okay. I wanted something a little stronger than vinegar because vinegar is real cheap too, uh, but not as caustic or damaging like muriatic acid or that, that stuff is just nasty. So um, I'm trying citric acid as an in-between. Um, it's funny when I did some research, <laughs> the only place I saw bashing citrus acid is um, one of the vendors uh, of Apparust. They've got this article on their website how citric acid is bad. It can like, you know, remove paint. Well, I'm not, I don't have paint on those old wheels and it, it's saying it could pit metal, but uh, I'm not going to use a ratio. Hopefully, I don't just, I thought it was kind of funny that they're bashing kind of like this generic product. Usually when you see companies do that, they're worried about that product. So uh, they didn't have an article about bashing milk to remove rust, for example. Uh, anyway, uh, let me get a piece of paper here. I heated up, it said, um, I'm using warm water, so I, I basically put a big pot on the stove and just warmed up, I'm not boiling, but warmed it up. And this bucket has a measurement of two gallons inside. Uh, when I went online, here's what I saw. So let me see if we can read this. Citric acid mix ratios to water. So one place said a half ounce of acid to 15 ounces of water. So if you translate that to gallons, if I did my math correctly, it's about 4.3 ounces to one gallon of water. This other place, uh, um, using metric <laughs> uh, measurements here, 15 grams of acid with 400 milliliters of water, which I have no idea what that ratio is. I had to go look up and trans uh, look up and translate a bunch of numbers. It comes out to basically five ounces of acid to one gallon of water. And then this other guy, I'm going with him, uh, and I want to give him credit. If uh, you go to this website, bmxmuseum.com forums, there was a guy cleaning old bicycle sprockets, and he used a mixture of six ounces of acid to one gallon of water. That's a more concentrated ratio than 4.3 or 5, and he had photos on his website. He seemed to get good results, so I'm going to try that ratio of 6 ounces to 1 gallon. And you just get a measuring cup, and right there, 12 ounces. I went a little bit over, not too bad. I was also curious because this citric acid is also advertised, like you can cook and do food things with it. So, I just actually tasted a little bit of it, and you can't do that with muriatic acid. And it's very sour. It tastes like a Sour Patch Kid candy, like a sour candy. So it was just kind of interesting. I just put a little bit in taste because I was curious, so I just tasted it. And um, um, it's not toxic. That's another reason to go with citric acid is you, I don't, unless you ingest huge amounts, it won't kill you. So I'm going to use this ratio. If I need more water, I'll mix up another batch, but... There we go. I'm going to mix that up and maybe do another few more gallons and try it on the rusty wheel, see what happens. Okay, here's an update. I ran into some challenges. So my first challenge is um, I ran it. There's a little bit left, but I ran out of acid. So basically this whole package, two and a half pounds, 2.5 pounds, um, it mixed up six gallons, which is good, you know, but you can see here, the six gallons uh, did not cover the whole wheel. So I actually had to tilt the container. I've got it propped up so I could get more of the wheel submerged. Now, I did order more because I bought this online at Amazon. I ordered another package, but it won't get here for a few more days. But this is, uh, so this causes a few challenges. One is, the wheel is not as submerged as I want. So because this is going to take, uh, from what I read, it's like nine to 10 hours of sitting time. And what I'll have to do is as it sits, I'm going to have to, ro <laughs> like I'll do a section at a time, then rotate it and have to wait like another, you know, nine or 10 hours. Uh, I'm looking at probably at least three rotations given my submerged here, but then I have to flip it over. So, that's a lot of uh, flipping and changing the position to get it immersed. So I'm not going to be able to do it as quickly as I thought. Um, and the other challenge is this is six gallons here. It's hard to, um, doesn't look like a lot, but uh, you know, if you were going to buy a commercial product at like 
I don't know, $30 a gallon, six, you know, six times three, that's, you know, $180 of, <laughs> that gets expensive. Uh, I mean, you could, at that point, you could easily do it cheaper by sandblasting at a shop somewhere. Uh, so that's why I went with the Citric here is this, I don't know if I said the price or not, this is like 17 or $18. So even two of these to get 12 gallons is like under 40 bucks. So for under 40 bucks, I'm willing to put more liquid in this and see uh, if I can, uh, but I'm running out of, if you look here, the edge, I'm kind of, uh, I can like put a little more, maybe a gallon or so, and then I'll be, you know, this container is at its max as far as what it can do. So not the end of the world, but this is not how I envisioned. Uh, I even thought of maybe a trash bag approach. Maybe I'll do that with the second batch. We'll see. Because I still have one more wheel after this. But I do want to see what the effect of the citric acid is mixing at a ratio of uh, six ounces to one gallon. And I can see the results on a partial area of the wheel just to see if it's doing a good job or not. Um, but covering the whole wheel is going to take a lot more time. Okay, let's check the progress. Uh, it is slow progress, but this sat overnight. You can see the part that I rotated out, and I just used a simple wire brush to just uh, agitate or get some of the rust off. So what I'll do is I'll rotate this down here. That's the new section. So another thing to think about, if you use this method outside, I hope you're doing it outside, is um, evaporation. So if it's hot out, um, your liquid mix with the citric acid is going to evaporate. So you probably need to have a little bit of extra to mix and keep the level up. <clears throat> so what I do is I just take the wire brush after I rotate it. some of that stuff off. I've got a bend right there. But you can see So you can see if you zoom in, if I zoom in for you here, that uh, it is getting the rust off. Uh, I am finding some paint, uh, and you know that's good. If the wheels are probably painted well, they were prepped. Uh, they probably had primer on them, so I wasn't expecting the citric acid to get the paint off. Uh, but there is some paint, so. Most likely I'll have to do some additional sanding um, to get the paint and primer off. But the idea is I wanted a, a low cost way to get the rust off. And this appears to be doing okay, but you can see it's a slow process because I can't submerge the entire wheel. So I have to keep rotating it. And so put this down here. That's that looks like paint right here. Um, now, it's actually very. Uh, I got lucky, at least so far. The this is actually the outer edge here. It's um, this is pretty. It's pretty smooth. I wouldn't say it's like straight off the factory, but you know, uh, there's. I don't feel any bad pitting. So in here, you know, so the. Once you get that rust off, um, you know, you can really see the true, what the uh, condition of the metal is. And so uh, if that's not pitted bad or damaged underneath the rust, <clears throat> this will make a nice wheel to uh, prep and paint for future use. Okay, I am now, this is my continuing project to remove the rust off my Ford Model A wheels. Uh, these are 19 inch wheels that go on a 30, 31 model. Although technically they're almost 22 inches in diameter. I have to figure that part out later. But um, 
Anyway, I wanted to show how the citric acid, so remember, that's my big pan I put together mixed up of citric acid. Six ounces for every one gallon. And I want to show you the results side by side. So these two wheels had the exact same amount of rust on them. They were stored together. And you can see that the, I would say overall, the citric acid did a good job removing the rust. Um, let me point out some things. So uh, you'll see some lines in the wheel and that's where I couldn't fully submerge the wheel. So you'll see kind of like these uh, water lines in the wheel if I zoom in because as I rotated around I was trying to uh, you know get parts of the wheel submerged and that's tricky. So the total time and effort, although this took several elapsed days for the wheel on the right, uh, the total effort is really not that much. Every time I flipped it around, it was only like 10 minutes, and again, I took just like a simple wire brush every time and just tried to clean everything off. Uh, let me show you the back as well. And even on the back side, uh, let me zoom in here. You can see, and again, there's a water line there because as I was, I could get rid of that by eventually rotating it. Um, and you can see what it looked like before, just lots of years of rust, right? Uh, one thing to notice is uh, the citric acid is not, if there's any paint or primed areas of paint, it won't get that off. So for example, let me zoom in right here. This is a section, it looks like these wheels are painted black. So this is paint. So I'll probably eventually have to um, maybe get this sandblasted. You could sand it by yourself. So for example, let me zoom out here. Um, you know, you could get similar results using sandpaper, but um, as someone who's used a lot of sandpaper on metal parts in the past, I can tell you that's a very, <laughs> that's a tedious job. Uh, you don't want to be hand sanding more than you have, but just to give you an idea here on one of these, let me use one of these spokes. You know, if you were so inclined and you want to buy some sandpaper, and uh, for example, this spoke here has some paint on it, so you could just, and this comes off very easy. And that's just with a, with a few minutes of work there. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but that shined up really, that one spoke. And it's a lot, uh, I noticed after dipping it in the citric acid, uh, this, it's easier to sand, kind of loosens up the material that's left on there. So you could go still prep these wheels with sandpaper if you wanted. Uh, I may in fact do that, although that's going to be more time, and sandpaper is not cheap either. And then another recommendation is if you have a, a metal cleaner that has a particularly phosphoric acid in it, like this one does. So um, I'm not necessarily pushing this particular one, but notice it says wheel cleaner and it says etching on it. Do you see etching right there? And it says great for rust, uh, rough cast alloy, which these are rough cast. <laughs> and if you look at the ingredients bag, this is too small to read, but uh, phosphoric acid is, uh, if you spray that on the wheels after you prep them and everything, it'll prevent them from rusting faster because, you know, if you work with any kind of iron, uh, you know, raw metal and you uh, sand it, any kind of water that's exposed, uh, it'll flash rust or it'll tend to rust pretty quick which is frustrating after you've done all this work, but if you etch it or put some kind of protectant on it, um, that'll keep it from rusting. So overall, the cost is good on this. Uh, oh, the other thing I want to point out is I still have this bucket of uh, citric acid, right? This pan. And I don't know if it 
loses its concentration or how good it is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that second wheel over here that's rusty and I'm going to just go ahead and see how concentrated. Um, now there's, there's rust mixed in here and of course this is outside so there's like leaves and things in here and up oh, poor fly he got caught in there. So you know what you can do is like mix it up. There's a lot of junk in there. <laughs> and just what I'm going to do is put that second wheel in. And I'll just come out and check it at the end of the day or tomorrow. Um, and just see if I can get more use out of this citric acid, even better, right? But if it's losing its strength, I've got more I can mix up. But that would be great if I can keep now. The, you can see evaporation. Uh, it's hard to see, but um, I could raise that water level up um, by mixing a few more gallons and putting it in there. So I'm going to see um, if I can continue to use this batch of citric acid or after a few days of use, does it lose its concentration? I don't know. But I would say even given my results so far, just looking at that wheel, it's a big, uh, I hope the video captures, it's a, it's a big difference. <laughs> And my overall, again, my total work has been pretty minimal to get all that rust off. And uh, again, the total elapsed time is going to be several days if you don't have a contained. That's the biggest. So my biggest advice besides trying out the citric acid is, you know, try to find a container. I don't know if you can find a perfect container where you can just set the wheel down and it's round like a bucket, like a big pan, pail bucket. That would be optimal to submerge the wheel, but I haven't found something so I'm just using this method as an alternative. Okay it's the next morning with the second wheel. Let's see how effective this citric acid is uh, after several days of use. And so pull this out. see that came off really well so this citric acid is still um, very effective and is usable so that's even better value because I can keep using this on um, what I'm gonna do is probably mix up, mix up um, a couple more gallons and put that in there to raise the water level a bit but you can see uh, after going several days out in the sun with that previous wheel and now I'm on my second wheel that the citric acid still does a good job taking the rust off so um, that makes it even more cost effective because I can keep reusing this liquid. Anyway I think that's probably enough of removing rust off Model A wheels so I'll go ahead and stop here.